companions, a vagabond congress who gather together to support one another in this harsh world. In these times, there is a dark age descended upon the realm of mankind. This is the inheritance of the ancients left to their descendants. What foolishness did these old ones endeavor upon to bestow such great sorrow upon their children? No one knows, for it has long passed, though the consequences of their actions remain. Every companion has a story burden that has brought them here in this bulwark of hope. Some were slaves, others forced to commit great acts of evil upon men. Yet their mysterious leader shows only compassion for them all. So they gather around him and care for each other as they struggle against the darkness. This family stands as a beacon of light within the endless seas of ignorance, fear, and selfishness. This alone cannot and will not bring them their daily bread, however. So the companions set forth to some ruins of an old citadel that has fallen in battle in search of treasure and salvage. Having arrived at the ruins without incident, the companions find that the journey was more arduous than anticipated. The companion who was carrying the rations informs everyone that this situation is dire. A feeling of worry spreads among the companions. All of them know the pain of hunger and of thirst. But to do so in vain is a lot to bear. Their leader's confidence soothes their worries, however, as they venture inside.
The companion's faith in their leader is rewarded when he finds a cache of weapons stuck in the ground under some rubble. They were placed there ritualistically, but he does not care why or what the ritual was about. All he knows is that here they are, and he quickly gathers them up with great joy in his heart. The companions rejoice together. This will give them barter for supplies and for food, and will also give them the building materials they need for their base back at the hub, which is their home. What creature is it that you see here? Do you see a dirty and desperate whore? Does it revile you to know that she allows her flesh to be consumed in exchange for scraps of food? The patriarch of the companions sees a soul in need of a shirt, so he gives her the shirt he himself wears, his only shirt. This simple act of compassion sparks hope within her spirit, and she becomes part of the companions as a result. A new creature transforms as her flesh reflects the rebirth of her inner understanding. eager to learn from this great man. She accepts his teachings as he shows her new skills useful for her survival. In this new life she gladly surrenders her soul to the love bestowed upon her by the companions as she learns to become part of them. Among the companions are the hands of a healer, belonging to a man of great knowledge. Few understand the nature of the ancient runes, as he does, and these runes gave him exceptional understanding of the physical body and the human condition. In his past, others have exploited his abilities so as to harvest flesh and organs for their own selfish ends. But as a companion, he is revered by them all. He shows the patriarch a map he discovered in the ruins that shows of a wondrous city to the north. Though it is too dangerous for them to make such a journey, if they could make that journey, there would be a lot of opportunities for them. So the healer and scholar gathers the companions to set out and explore the nearby desert region of Sten. This desert region is relatively nearby, however, to make such a journey will condition all of them on the realities of making such journeys to far off places, as well as the opportunity to discover. All the companions agree to this and prepare to embark. As the companions journey to the Sten Desert, the warrior and the cook share in a conversation of their common past of being slaves. 
The warrior is exceptionally vulnerable in his emotions expressed concerning this. Knowing this, the cook soothes the deep wounds left by his past scars. He listens to her kindness and draws from her strength. All the companions share his burden, and he is uplifted. Hunger the ongoing and enduring pain of an empty stomach. Outside the walls of the city Squin, a vagabond mob of homeless and hungry people attack the companions for the food that they just bought there. Being that the companions are recent merchants to the city, the guards take the living members of the mob back to their dungeons. Once safe, the healer lays his hands upon the companions in attendance to their wounds. All of them express gratitude of the scholar's gifts as he shares his gifted hands freely upon them. The question is raised about the fate of the living within the hungry mob. The warrior strengthens the minds of the companions with the reality that even though they will be sold as slaves, they will also be fed. Ultimately, this is what they wanted. A great conflict is gathering, and mercenaries from all the realms converge at the way station on the edge of the Sten Desert. Food is in short supply as a result, and the merchants there want an exorbitant price for it. Unable to get the supplies they need with the money they have, the journey of the companions almost ended here. However, the newest companion learned well the lessons given to her by the patriarch. This empowers her to take matters into her own hands. Through her steadfast courage and awareness, she procures the supplies needed for the companions to continue onward. None of the companions condemn her way of doing this, for they share a common soul with one another. This entity of their spirit is the meaning of their existence. Who is this man that embodies the patriarch of the companions? Nothing is known about his past, only that he wandered the wilderness until the day he came unto the world. It is as if reality itself came down to earth from the heavens to live as the people condemned to it, to show through his deeds and words the meaning of compassion and hope. He does not judge nor condemn the companions, only accepts each of them as a true treasure. This is why the companions fervently follow him as their leader, even though he does not recognize himself as such.
through harsh conditions over many days, the companions grow sick and become broken. The patriarch leads them to an ancient ruin to find temporary respite. Gathering around the campfire, the patriarch tells tales of profound wisdom. All of the companions feel uplifted by the vigor of his spirit, and each in their own heart find new strength from it. At the gates of the Shek, twin cities of Last Stand, it is well communicated to the companions that they can take refuge. However, they are not welcome. Despite the vulgarity of the hospitality given, the companions welcome this opportunity nonetheless. At the public house, the patriarch has a conversation with an old woman. In her culture, she is considered shameful for allowing herself to become old and not following the footsteps of their deity, Kral. The patriarch asks if she would like to become a part of the companions, to which she agrees. In her gratitude of being accepted, she arranges for the companions to rest and recover from the rigors of their arduous journey so far. Are the Shek a species of man? No one knows, for living memory only goes back several hundred years. Maybe they descended from the stars in the time of the foolish ancients. None of this matters in the present time. The other companions converse with her and she with them. Clearly, it will take patience and understanding to acclimate with the old Shek woman and themselves. They share a common spirit. Because of this, they communicate one to another in an effort to find that understanding. The patriarch laughs to himself as they journey to the next destination. Though the world is a harsh place, it is not evil. 
good fortune favors the companions as they meet a caravan of trading merchants. Trade, friendship, and exchange of information transpires among them. This is an example of light that redeems this world of sorrow with a certain hope. To the east of the Sten Desert and the south of the border zone lies the swamp. After traveling in this realm for an amount of time, the companions find an old ruin. Barring the entrance of the main structure is a large iron door. The locking mechanism is of an ancient design made during an era known as the Second Empire. The old Czech woman has a solution, however, but it is a crude one indeed. The healer sweats with anticipation as the rogue works on opening all the locked chests. It turns out that this is an ancient library of lost knowledge and technologies. This is the treasure the companion set out to find. As the other companions scour the ruins for salvage, the scholar teaches the rogue his understanding of the ancient ruins. She understands their power, even though she does not understand their meaning. The healer suggests to her that most of the meaning is beyond him as well. But with diligence and study, they will soon come to comprehend it. Once the companions return home to the hub, each set about to improve their lives. This one is an engineer. He dreams of inventing and creating things that adds to the quality of everybody's lives. Czech woman finds a common spirit with the warrior. She has found a dream to redeem herself as a protector of the companions, for they have placed so much value upon her. Of course, the warrior feels the kinship as well. He trains hard, for he was once a slave. Now he dreams of becoming strong and fighting those who will enslave others to do their bidding.
warrior is not the only former slave. This one is just happy to be free amongst the companions. What she used to do under the whip, she freely gives to the benefit of her newly found family. The scholar was a feared butcher in his time of the past. Forced to harvest body parts and organs for the selfishness of others. Now, with the companions, he is free to pursue his own path to knowledge. His research is his dream and his devotion. What is this? This is the result of the discoveries found within the ruins of the swamp by the scholar. Since no one has a word to describe it, it is simply referred to as a skeleton. He dreams of keeping the scholar safe so that the healer continues to bring his gifts to the world. The patriarch dreams of a new kingdom. This kingdom is built on trade and commerce, not war and suffering. So he works on his new store site with plans of future wealth for the companions.